This program has been made possible in part by the following sponsors. The Trial Lawyers Association of B.C. The Vancouver Courier Newspaper. My new book about addictions, All the Way Home, Building Recovery That Works. We have a premier in this province who likes to fashion herself as the family premier. We, I think we're the only province in the world with uh, family day, are we? And, uh, but it, maybe she has to speak to a couple of people because lately we've been experiencing cuts left, right and center to all kinds of vulnerable people. Uh, we may talk about uh, a bit about uh, community health care clinics. That's not the main topic, but it's related. But today we're particularly concerned about the United Way announcing that they were cutting back on a whole bunch of programs, and in particular on senior services uh, organizations. And, and only this morning the headline was the mayor freaking out about homelessness because that's a big part of his election plank. He said he was going to cure it by a certain time. Now it looks like the numbers are on the rise. Well, I have news for you, kids, those of you in politics. If you keep throwing people out of their homes, you're going to have homelessness. Isn't that an odd thing? So um, the United Way uh, can, in a way, not be blamed for not having enough money because they depend on donations. However, the United Way has some things to take responsibility for, and we'll talk about that. We're delighted to welcome to our studios Carolee Block, the Executive Director of the Senior Services Society, and Elmer Cardinal, who is just a good friend of the Society and has used their services in some way or another. Great to see both of you here. Uh, uh, Elmer, what have you, what's your relationship with the Society? What have you done with them? Well, I just landed, uh, came in, and I uh, was a homeless guy here. One really? Day. Yes. I came in from um, uh, Halifax. I went to live over there, and I, uh, my doctor, I, my, I, I have been in a few accidents, and my doctor suggested maybe Vancouver would be better weather for me yeah. um, uh, for my arthritis because he was prescribing too much medication, and it was right. He was right, and I moved here, and... And I didn't know that it was the most expensive place on earth, and I didn't have enough funding to get my my uh, uh, all my personal stuff, especially my stuff I need like pills and yep. I need this apparatus for sleeping at at night time because I have severe sleep. I, I, it was stuck in the airport. I couldn't get it out. Really, it really stuck. So a friend put me up for a couple of nights in a in his home. But uh, I had to sleep on a couch, and the last time I slept on a couch, I was about I was about 16 years old, and it didn't matter. But yeah. one year old and as injured as I I am, and with arthritis, and you cannot sleep on a couch. And no. So I was just flabbergasted, and and I was really stuck. Somebody gave me a pamphlet with seniors services. seniors services, yeah, and I looked through it and made a phone call and. Hold and behold, uh, I thought it was a miracle that wow. uh, I would I'd get that much help with my stuff from the airport, an emergency shelter, yep. and um, and the best part of it was storing my stuff, a place to store my stuff, where a lot of seniors can't afford that, and it was just amazing, amazing, amazing. That's sweet. That's sweet. Where are you now? Are you are you still depending on them, or you're mm -hmm. you're on your own hook these days? Well, we sort of yeah. do things together, but. I'm in such a good place now that yeah. uh, it's a place where I like leaving and it's a place where I like coming home, yeah. you know, just yeah. like a real home. And yeah. uh, I couldn't ask for more. And uh, it's, That's it was an awesome journey from yeah. senior services. That's great that you're here, Elmer. Sara Lee, tell us about this. Uh, uh, why am I calling you Sara Lee? Because I grew up with a girl named Sara Lee. <laughs> Carol right. Lee, uh, forgive me. No <laughs> uh, Carol Lee, tell me about the society and about this funding cut. What kinds of things do you do? How much loot does it take? 
and what are you going to lose now? Yeah, essentially our agency, Senior Services Society, is a $1.2 million entity with a, a mandate to help seniors live independently in their own home with right. any supports that may be necessary. So we've been in operation um, as a formal society for over 50 years. We had two parent organizations. Yes. Um, so we've been one of the, the most predominantly um, senior serving agencies with regards to the housing sector of seniors, um, you know, back until from the 70s. Yes. And so uh, United Way has been a really strong partner of ours and we still are a partner of United Ways. Yes. Um, we still do receive funding sources from them. Um, however, the programs that as of late have been cut um, or have no longer been continued, um, we are losing $300,000 of our portfolio um, with regards to those decisions. And how much warning did you get so that you could go back out on the street and make that up? Like none? Um, no, actually, uh, you know, we did receive notice, yes. uh, so it's okay. three programs that are being affected. Okay. Um, two of the programs we've received about 13, uh, 14 months notice. So, oh, good. you know, well, with regards something. to notice, that's, okay. uh, you know, we consider okay. that adequate and okay. we're very thankful for so, that. Someone in this first story uh, was didn't. complaining that they didn't get exactly. any notice at all. Exactly. And the other program, yeah. the third program, I think it's about a six months notice. So yes. it really depends for all the agencies when their cycle of their contract was because simply United Way is not renewing contracts. Um, they're not cutting what they had existing um, you know, commitments in. They're just not renewing. And if you had a cycle that ended, just so happened to end um, you know, at the end of March, those yeah. folks might have had a really short uh, six weeks notice or something. But So your experience Experience, at least in that regard, has been uh, pretty gracious. They, they were pretty good about saying, okay, look, we have a real problem. We, exactly, yeah. 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 So, I mean, we do consider having, you know, an, an adequate amount of notice here to respond, to react, to seek some future yeah. partners and whatnot. Yeah. Uh, so what are you doing? What Have you found anybody? Have you found anybody who's opening their purse? Unfortunately not. Um, yes. So we've st been hitting the pavement and opening up dialogue with uh, the provincial government, um, some small foundations, um, you know, who have some capacity. Uh, but we've really just been trying to do some planning. So really just kind of getting our business plan together. Um, it was already in existence, but just sort of fine-tuning it to really build that case for support um, with some conversations with the province um, and we're really hoping that uh, in particular the temporary housing program yes um, which is the only senior shelter in BC that that one would really be a good fit within the provincial housing strategy these these numbers I know that they're, they're a lot for any one person to, to, to do anything about but they're quite modest in terms of the yeah, kinds of, of money that we throw around in this in this province uh, tell me about the people who will be affected because there will be some people like Elmer, and thank God that Elmer has his own uh, uh, resources and capacities now. Yeah, so I believe the number is about um, 172,000 seniors were um, given service to with the funds from the United Way. Yes. Um, so the the dollars that will be lost uh, moving forward had it impacted positively 172,000 seniors in our province. So you know that's that's the impact in terms of who is being affected. But tell me, tell me, give me a story about someone, uh, someone named Lisa, someone named Bob, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that you work with. Uh, day to day right now yeah, I mean, the one of the stories that just comes to mind is the senior who uh, really has been um, engaged her whole life with family and friends and in her workplace, has yes. colleagues, retires, and um, finds herself at 80 and um, no longer gets out of the house, so has no social contact with anyone. Yes. And so they're part of our bus program uh -huh. where we pick up the clients on our bus, 16 yes. passenger bus. We make arrangements with local businesses so they can go and dine and connect with, you know, Know, friends both new and past friends yeah. and so that program is available in all the communities across um, the lower mainland and just yes, have a friend as a driver well, yes. no, the, we yeah, have yeah, a bus that yeah, has yeah, a, yeah, yeah, unless yeah. they have a driver, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, really, it's 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 really seen as such a minuscule thing. Well, you know, too bad that lady won't be able to go out for lunch. Can't she just do something else, you know, somewhere else? But like really, what, hang gliding? she doesn't have any other options. She's not going to be taking the bus because yes. it's not uh, going to work for her for many reasons. Handy dart, I mean, she'd be standing out in the rain sometimes yes. for a couple hours waiting. So this really sets up a program that ensures their social interaction, which we know is a key determinant of health. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. People will live longer if they have that uh, social connection. Exactly. Uh, social connection has been proven over and over again scientifically to be even more important to human beings than food. Water is first, and then social connection, and then food. Exactly. Yeah. And I mean, that intervention and prevention piece that a lot of, you know, our agencies and all of our, our colleagues and across the senior uh, social sector, we really get that the prevention piece, you know, so something as simple as uh, dining as a social interaction, we yes. know that that saves health care dollars down the road. And we're really actively trying to make that, that argument out there. There's not, there's not much that... Uh the United Way can do about a fact that, that people are not giving as generously as they have in other years. That's okay. not the United Way's fault. And the United Way certainly does its best to crank up the donations. Mm -hmm. But you don't have to say this, but let me say it. The United Way has some pretty high-priced administrators. They've got several people who are making very, very handsome six-figure uh, salaries. And the United, United Way boys and girls might want to think about that. They might want to think about uh, uh, the, the old argument is, well, you got to pay them, you know, uh, the street wages to be, you know, competitive. Mm -hmm. Not in social services. Mm -hmm. You don't. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just my. Rant yeah. for the day. Yeah, definitely. Donation dollars, you know, has an effect uh, on what they're able to give. Um, yes. And they need to have key individuals at their agency who can really attract those big donations, those big corporate donations. Um, yeah, I, I'm just thinking, you know, as you're talking about this, I'm thinking about four extremely wealthy people that I happen to know personally. And any one of them, to be honest, could simply write this check, you know. Uh, but, you know, because I think of people like you, because I know this business, people like you having to fill out 46 forms, go to 200 meetings, exactly. and, and present your case and line up all the bottles on the table. And, exactly. Yeah. But it would be lovely if one of these extremely rich guys would just go, yeah, okay. I'll give, I'll give them my card. <laughs> okay. But I really do think, though, Dave, as a sector, the senior serving sector is, is underfunded in terms of um, just it's not the catchy... Uh, you know, children it's not are. Sexy. It's yeah. not sexy, and, yeah. and we yeah. need to make this this sector sexy. Children are our future. It's a no-brainer to yes. invest for the future. But how can we get to the to the reality of those giving with their checkbook? That seniors are have built what we have today, and therefore we need to give back and continue to support their their life cycle. Yeah, absolutely. I was an MC some years ago at, a, at an event for the Children's Hospital, and one of the startling things that, that happened right during the event was that a guy who was slated to write a check for 50000 was so moved by what he saw of this child that he wrote the check for 100000 So kids will break your heart. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, seniors often, <laughs> they're not top of the top of mind they're too bad not. Yeah. yeah and we call it out of sight out of mind yeah. sometimes and yeah. we need we're, to bring them yeah. in sight and on our mind our tradition is not to pe not to put people seniors on a nice flow yeah, yeah exactly. we'll take a little break uh, and we'll be back with our guests in just a minute this is your opportunity to send us an email and check out our website at davidburner.com and also the opportunity for those lovely folks who uh, uh, help us put this show on to say hello here on Shaw Community Television Cable 4. Back with our guests in just a moment. This program has been made possible in part by the following sponsors. The Trial Lawyers Association of B.C. Vancouver Courier Newspaper. My new book about addictions, All the Way Home, Building Recovery That Works. One of our guests, Elmer Cardinal, was uh, mentioning the loss of uh, one of the, the world's great seniors. Uh, I saw him do his show, Sugar Babies, in San Francisco about 30 years ago with Ann Miller. The guy was a genius. He could do 
He was an encyclopedia of performance, sing, dance, act. Uh, we're talking about uh, Mickey Rooney. You, uh, Omar, you have some interesting concerns about seniors, how seniors are not in their natural place in the family and in the community anymore. Yeah, I, th I think it's one of the values that we're losing about, uh, you know, looking after the seniors. And I remember as a young person, our grandparents were always in the yard living near us. Yeah. We don't see that anymore. It seemed like seniors are just put aside or hidden somewhere and forgotten. And I think a lot of the people forget that the seniors were the ones that built mm -hmm. this country, particularly Vancouver. And I think about that. I worked on a on a dam, on a on a Bennett Dam, and I worked logging here as well. And you know, I feel some like some of the seniors that are the same age as me. They all helped build where we're at today. And also, uh, Elmer, don't you agree? What a loss for the children that they don't have their grandparents Absolutely. to learn from and to, and to look at. Mm -hmm. I mean, Absolutely. I was fortunate. I grew up in my grandparents' home, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, yeah. and, and I, I would be a completely different person without yeah. that experience. Yeah. And especially in my culture, the native culture, we respect the elders. That's where, yeah. that's where the people we learn from, and they're the ones that are our teachers spiritually and culturally and the medicines. They, they were the ones that saw us, and then we treat them like this. Uh, it's, 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 it's sort of bothering yeah, me. We, yeah, ab absolutely. We are turning a blind eye. Here's, here's one of the thoughts that occurred to me, because it's a running theme for me, that, you know, how are we spending our money, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Carolee? We're spending our money I I on crack pipes and, and free heroin and free booze and, and places to shoot up and all of that usual nonsense. Mm -hmm. And then we're choking on making sure that seniors have a place to live, or that seniors, uh, I mean, I used to uh, uh, um, visit a 2,000 year old guy uh, for several years. I'd visit him in his apartment here in the West End, mm -hmm. and he had so-called home care, but trust me, it was so disorganized, so shoddy, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that he was always having to teach the, the care worker, you know, what to, do. what to do and which kind of tea he drank, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, you know what I'm seeing with with regards to home care and taking care of the seniors, we've, yes. this notion of, of sort of splitting the, the person into two. So How this side mean? of my body is, you know, getting treated from a medical perspective. It's the, the medical care. And this side is being treated the non-medical. Yes. And, you know, in 2008, uh, Fraser Health cut programs that really looked at the at the senior as a, as a full holistic human being where they got you know the support services and the medical services all in one package because and Fraser Health cut it that was free it was a, across yes. the all the health authorities yes. you know that really was prevalent in 2008 yes. and now it's really about treating those different parts of the senior um, differently or, or at different times rather and it's it's really about just every you know every person has a whole being they have got their social parts and they've got their medical parts that need to be attended to and the funding should be you know really catching all of it at once only not bu only it. bureaucrats could think in that categorical sort of way exactly. that there's this part of the person and that part of the person. Yeah. look you're you're on record here you're saying that 20 apartments used by seniors for an average of four months each on an emergency basis yes. are among things that you'll probably lose. Yes, so that program was the one where we got six months notice. It's yes. going to end come September of this year yes. um, without for, uh, you know, securing future funding. 20 bucks a day. 20 bucks a How day. How could we is what cut we that? Do. And we know that, you know, in a shelter, it's probably going to cost them about $100 a day. And we guarantee that, you know, like Elmer, they're not going to leave our, our site until yes. they have a new permanent and appropriate place to live. So the 20 uh, units that we've been running for temporary shelter, yes. the only senior shelter in BC, we can about serve 30 in a year um, coming through that program, but yes. we're, accident, we're unfortunately having to say no to 200 or so folks that are just not simply going to be able to come through our program because there's only 20 units. And it's, how, how do you say no? I, I, well, I, it, it's it's a tough one. It's not, it's not the luxury part of the job, but it's uh, connecting them with other service providers who may be able to, you know, Know, hold their hand and help them find a new place to live. Seniors no longer alone, a $350,000 a year program that helps service providers reach out to very isolated mm -hmm. people. 
yeah, who, so who will now be utterly isolated. So those programs, so those, you know, in Tri-Cities, uh, they're losing a friendly visitor program. Um, it's really uh, seniors that are isolated in their own home, and it's bringing other senior peers to kind of connect with them, get them out in the community, maybe do some shopping, maybe going for coffee, but it's that maybe their only social contact that they've had all week, and those programs are what are going to be affected um, as we see the, the funding dry up from United Way and wherever else they get their funding from. I, I'm sort of speechless. It just, I, I just can't absorb this. It's, it just seems lunatic. I, I understand that you know, everybody keeps cutting, cutting, cutting. You know, there's less money, there's less money. Yeah. But how, how can you do this? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, uh, co colleagues in, of mine that are service providers across yes. the Lower Mainland, yes. we've been getting together and trying to secure. Today, it's the United Way. Yes. You know, last, you know, 2008, it was Fraser Health. These cuts are happening around us. Yeah. How are we going to prevent them? We need to come up with a sustainable funding future. And we look to a model that we have in our province that's the Ministry of Family and Child Development, oh, yes, MCFD, yes. Yeah, a yeah, great yeah. funder to yeah. programs for children. Yes. Yeah, yeah. It's a ministry within our provincial right. government and, and there's you know a, a system in place that can help fund key prevention programs for our youth so they don't become high risk and so something like that is a model that we you know we're looking to lean on in yes. some part because there needs to be a sustainable funding future I would say good luck because that is a ministry that even though it has these high ideals, it's a ministry that has changed hands. Absolutely. Uh, like on average twice a year, it's constantly getting a new minister. Yes. And it's been very inconsistent in exactly. performance, I'm sorry to say this. Yeah, I say model, not yes. necessarily a, a complete replica. <laughs> yes. Um, and yeah. definitely, you know, learning yeah. from the pros and cons of maybe how it's set up and how it operates. And in terms of children, if we didn't have uh, uh, Mary, uh, what's her name, Trafon? Yeah. Uh, the, the children's advocate jumping in, mm -hmm. uh, we'd have a lot more problems. Well, thankfully, yeah. in the seniors' yes. realm, we just have a new uh, seniors' advocate. We do? We do. Mm -hmm. I, she started a few weeks ago. Who's this? Um, her name is Isabel McKenzie. Yes. And we're really excited about her coming on board to, you know, be the, the seniors' advocate. But it's a little different structure than the way that the children... Are you talking about a provincial assignment? This is a provincial assignment. Uh, yes but it's not independent as the sector okay. had requested. Yes. Um, however, it is a step in the right direction and we're looking forward to her setting up uh, a team around herself. It's not a whole ministry, which is also what the sector requested. Let me ask you a ridiculous, strange question. There are a lot of care homes, uh, uh, some, many of them have government financing, but many are independent, uh, private mm -hmm. companies, mm -hmm. uh, mo many of them do very well as a business. Mm -hmm. Is it would it be irrational to ask a for-profit senior care home, could you give us two beds a month? Would that be impossible? It wouldn't be impossible, um, and I think you know some of these uh, corporations that are across Canada yes. for care home f and facilities um, are giving back. You know, really, they are yes. giving back to their communities. Oh, I wasn't saying they weren't. I'm just wondering um, if you could involve them. Yeah, yeah and it, you know, it's definitely a good thought. So thank yeah. you. I'll add it to our hit list. Um, and I know we, we really do see that as uh, maybe an option for the future. What we really do know is when we cluster all 20 units of our housing yes. in one or two buildings, yes. it's just better for, you know, just the management of it yes, rather of than course. if they were kind of spread out. But if there was a care home, you know, out there today that'd be willing to partner with us on that, we would be very open to it. And your senior services society dot org, is it? It's seniors services society dot CA. Dot CA. Uh, your your organization uh, operates or tries to cover uh, uh, the whole Lower Mainland or yes. just the city of Vancouver? No, the whole Lower Mainland in yeah. terms of when we work with homeless seniors, we yes. get, we're the referral, the only referral agency for homeless seniors in the region. Um, however, we have a housing directory of BC and uh -huh. what it is is it's a listing of literally every senior's housing building from independent living to end of life care. Um, all listed in a database. And does the mayor or his city manager, uh, do they have any numbers on how many of the homeless people in Vancouver are in fact seniors? 
There is numbers. Um, the count yes. that just took place here in Vancouver and in the region, yes. um, the numbers are going to be coming out shortly. They're not yet available. Do you have any sense of what they'll look like? Do you have any, uh, um, I think it's around 200 seniors found uh, within the Lower Mainland, but we know that it's not the reality. I mean, Elmer is a prime example. He's part of the hidden homeless population. Uh -huh. He was couch surfing. Yes. Um, he wouldn't have been counted in the street count of, oh, there's a, you know, a gentleman with uh, his sleeping bag. Elmer was on a couch. He wasn't counted. But we have 200 homeless identified seniors knocking on our door that it don't get service. That's, that's wicked. It's yeah. interesting how a phrase like couch surfing uh, is simmering along at different levels of society. Kids know that yeah. that phrase yeah. because a lot of kids are couch surfing because mm -hmm. they can't find work and they're not at home with their parents mm -hmm. and so they're floating around. Exactly, yeah, it's, yeah. it doesn't have the right uh, meaning behind it. You don't yes. get the, the point of it, which is they're homeless. Yeah. Look, thanks so much for doing this. Uh, Elmer, great to see you. Real pleasure to see you. Pleasure being here. And uh, uh, just hang in there, hang in there. Thanks, David. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, we didn't get to, uh, we didn't get to, uh, because it's not really their business, but we'll, we'll try and get to it in coming weeks, this whole business of uh, cutting down the community uh, uh, care facilities, the community health clinics, and putting them all in one place at 8th and Ontario, which I think is idiotic, frankly. So, uh, next week, uh, Ruth Mehta. Ruth Mehta runs a, a floral shop on East Hastings, but she has been a resident of Strathcona slash downtown east side for a zillion years, and she cannot stand what she sees people doing down there. So it'll be interesting to have her join us, and we hope that you will join us as well here on Shaw, Community Television Cable 4. Good night. <laughs>